Albatross. Now on YouTube, we embark on an artistic journey to the outer reaches of absurdity in Snakeworks. Warning. This week's video features scenes containing multiple incorrect pronunciations of the same word that may be distressing for some Warhammer fans with an elitist disposition. You have been warned. We're painting a Tauros. Hello, I'm Marcel. And I'm Mrs. Snakeworks. Before we paint, we still need to add something to these areas here. I would show you on blueprints if we had some. Here and here and here. See these little round bits on the sprue? I want them, but how do I get them off the sprue? <laughs> now Prometheus wasn't too bad a movie in my opinion. A lot of people don't like it as it's part of the Alien saga, but as a standalone movie, I think it's alright. But like they say, as an Alien prequel, I do feel it ruins a little bit of the lore. I'm interested to hear what you guys think of it. With these bits cut off, we have four little discs. They came off the sprue a little wonky, so we need to do something about that. Hudson is a little worried about it. Who's Hudson? Now what the f*** are we supposed to do? This is real pretty s*** now, man! You finished. To flatten the discs down, I used these nail files that I got from Boots. I need to replace them with wider ones as these are really quite small. We're getting picky with files now. I have detailed files. No, not those sort of files. Now, amusingly, when I was a boy, my dear mother always thought that Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger there said he had detailed bowels. I'm not sure what use those would be. With those discs all filed down, they are now ready for use. I have to be honest and say a few discs failed during either the cutting or filing stage and had to be binned. Here are all those failures. We like to show you everything, both the good and the bad here. Now if any of you guys can think of an easier way to get those little round discs made, then please let me know in the comments below. I don't want to be messing around with sprues for the rest of the projects. Now for some reason, I didn't take any footage of those discs being added. You can see one on the shield plate in the middle here. The others went on the front and sides of the Tauros. And the reason these parts are loaded onto these old paint pots is because it's priming time. This time to prime, I'm using this can of High Coat Black Primer. Their name badge says it gives the perfect finish. We'll put their name to the test. I do enjoy the movie 300. I'm a big fan of Gerard Butler and Mr. Fassbender. Very good actors in my opinion. The sequel to 300, can't remember what it was called, 300s, 301, it wasn't as good, but there were a couple of very good scenes in that movie. Here are all our parts all primed in black, ready for painting. You can see we are even getting some use out of that Kamiya painting stand we reviewed Kamiya. months ago. You said Kamiya, it says Kamiya, you should check this. Okay. It's okay. Now I just want to let you all know, we have a very scary scene coming up next. So if you are of the nervous disposition persuasion, then please you might want to look away for about 30 seconds to a minute or so. You have been warned. A few weeks ago, Snakeworks Jr. and I noticed some maggots crawling out of some things that Mrs. Snakeworks had dumped in the black bins. Not only that, but what appeared to be one of those false widow spiders, which were all the rage 10 years ago in the papers, appeared to be hunting them. Rather disgusting, but fascinating to watch. We're busting out the airbrush next. I've got this Squidmar themed Harder and Steenbeck Ultra to test out, so let's have a go with that, shall we? Now on a side note, hold on, on a side note, Snakeworks Jr. loves this airbrush. I think it's because of the gold coloration on it. It does look very pretty. So the first paint up for airbrushing is Vallejo Model Color Black. The one with the wrinkly label for reasons unknown. Not for reasons unknown, I told you. We then gave all the black primed parts a quick going over with a very thin layer of black. This is to catch any bits I might have missed with the rattle can. 
It also leaves a better finish for painting, in my opinion. Right, starting with these wheels, we are going to be using Vallejo model colour pink. Are these Slanesh themed Elysians? No. Using the airbrush, we then gave all the wheel hubs a coat of the pink. I wasn't worried too much about getting paint on the tyres, as we will be painting those again later. This here is what I like to call accidental footage. I don't know how I ended up filming it, but this is underneath my hobby table. On the left is the airbrush compressor, and on the right is an empty baby wipes box that I use for recycling. There was also an After Eights wrapper in the background. Did you spot it? When I was a kid, a box of yummy chocolates really turned me on. But I'm not a kid anymore. I found a box of chocolates just for me. Here's what a pink wheel looks like. In this light, it looks more purple, doesn't it? Interesting. Right, our next paint up is Vallejo Model Air White. We are using Model Air White as it is smoother to apply through the airbrush. Normal white, when thinned, can spatter a bit. Now some people just prefer to use white ink, and I think I said prefer to use instead of prefer. However, I'm not really a fan of the old white ink as I find it rubs off too easily and it's not very strong. So I'll stick with the old white paint. I then apply white to the center of all the panels on the Tauros. I only applied it to panels on the top and sides as the underneath was in shadow. Also, I wasn't too worried if this didn't come out perfect. Here are all the parts with that white applied. I did have to be a lot more careful applying the white to the wheels as I only wanted this white in the center of the hubs. Okay, so originally I painted the old Tauros in a different scheme to what you see here. After I painted my original version, which you're not seeing here, I then decided I wanted to change it to match the style of camouflage on the vehicles that you see in the book of the Anfelian project. So then I decided I had to repaint my Taurus in the style of the Anfelian project. Now talking of the Anfelian project, this is the second video in a series where we're tackling the armies and models and miniatures and scenarios of the Anfelian project. You can see the playlist up here somewhere. The lighting is changing a lot in this room today. But I think that's the best lighting. Anyway, let's get back to painting, shall we? So here are our new colours for painting the base coat camouflage on the Tauros. German grey, flat green and US field something. Field drab maybe? There's also buff there we use to mix in as a highlight. After a few minutes airbrushing on the camp, we have this. By the way, we didn't use any masks for the camouflage. Just a... Is it supposed to say masks? By the way, we didn't use any masks for the camouflage. Yeah. Just a fine hand and some trigger control. I think it came out quite well. It looks very bright here, doesn't it? Here's what the Tauros looks like out of the light and on the bench, a little darker. That's something we want to talk about later. Don't let me forget, please. Okay, next up, it's some Imperial Fists contrast paint. We applied the Imperial Fists contrast to the wheel hubs tinting that pink and white to a sort of orange and yellow. There's six wheels in all painted yellow, you know. Also, I feel you have to let contrast paints dry for quite a while. Now, I'm not sure why contrast paints seem to take so long to fully harden up. Is it just me that happens too? Do any of you guys have the same issue? Next up is Vallejo Buff. We then gently dry brush all those yellow wheels with a Vallejo buff as a highlight. It's not quite white, so it's a nice highlight that isn't too stark. With the dry brushed highlights on, the wheels are pretty much painted, but we won't be leaving them here. We want to do some weathering. Now when I say wheels, I mean just the hubs. We'll be tackling the old tyres separately. Vallejo Hull Red up next. Using a sponge, we then apply the hull red sparingly onto those wheel hubs to represent chipping and scratches. Less is more with this. Start with a little and then add to it. It's very easy to go overboard with the chips. Next up, Vallejo Model Air Chrome. 
Again, using a sponge, we add some more chips to the hubs. This time, I tried to aim for the center of the bigger hull red chips and also made some smaller chips on the nuts and bolt details. I used a lot less of this than the hull red as this is supposed to represent a greater level of damage. I need an orange paint, so grabbed some Vallejo Orange Red, but I think any orange would be fine here. After watering the orange down rather a lot, I applied some washers and a little panel lining to some of the wheel hub details to represent old rust. Again, I tried my best not to go overboard with this step. With the final rust step applied, the wheel hubs were finished. I think they look wonderful. Now I know it can be a little bit scary weathering or maybe ruining your paint jobs. But sometimes you just have to bite the old bullet and get on with it. Why is it called bite the bullet anyway, hey? It's time for the tyres. The first paint shall be German grey. Das ist gut. Das ist gut. We then apply two thin coats of the German grey to the tyres on the wheels. We have to be careful here, we don't get any of the German grey on those finished hubs. Take your time and don't rush. Painting all those tyres took a fair amount of time, but they do look a whole lot better already. We could have used black, but I don't think it wouldn't look very rubber-like. We could have used black, but I don't think it would look very rubber-like. Okay, well you've written wouldn't. We could have used black, but I don't think it would look very rubber-like. You might even be able to get rubber colour paints. Now I'm pretty sure I've seen a rubber black coloured paint in either the Tamiya line or maybe the Vallejo line somewhere. I might have to have a little look into that. For our tyre dirt, we shall be using Citadel Mornfang Brown. I think any mid-brown would work for this. We then paint all the gaps between the tread patterns on the tyres. You can be a little messy here as we're going to clean it up later. I also apply a very thin layer, almost a glaze, to the tyre side walls near the hubs. When all the brown is applied, we have some suitable muddy tyres. They look like tractor tyres from the farm that I grew up on. Now if you really wanted to push the old boat out, you could mix some texture paint or maybe some pigments into that mix to enhance the muddy effect. We now return to the German grey. Being as careful as we can, we repaint the tips of those tyre treads with the German grey. It does take a fair bit of time, but it is quite easy as those tread details are very pronounced. With the mud dry and our tyre tread grey reapplied, our tyres and therefore the wheels are now finished. We shall put them aside while we tackle the rest of the Tauros now. I think it's pronounced Tauros. You want me to go back and change it all? No, just carry on. I'm pretty sure I said Tauros last time and you said Tauros. Well, I don't know. No one knows. Fine. Now you might decide to paint your wheels after you've finished your Tauros. It's up to you, there are no rules. Okay, there's a fair chunk of footage missing here. Me applying the decals, but I've made whole videos about that, so I don't feel you really need to watch it again. I used some numbers and letters to make D99 on two sides of the Tauros and some number twos dotted about everywhere. There's a joke there, but it's too easy, so I'm not doing it. To help those decals conform to the surfaces, I used a few coats of Microsol. It basically melts the decal into shape. I wonder if using a heat gun would have the same effect. Now that sounds like a video experiment for another day. We don't want to be accidentally melting any of our best miniatures. We left the Microsol or Microsol? Micro. We left the Microsol overnight to finish doing its magic. You can't see it here, but we also applied a little Windsor and Newton matte varnish over the top to seal them in. Right then. Next, we made a wash of a one-to-one -one mix of Seprahim. Seraphim. <sighs> right then. Next, we made a wash of a one-to-one -one mix of Seraphim Sepia and Lamian Medium. Both of these are running low. Okay. I better remind Marcel to add more to the shopping list. Maybe I did forget to check it. Using a big old soft brush, we then applied the wash mix to all of the armour areas on the apparently Tauros. 
If it pulled anywhere, we use the brush to wick it away again. It's important to do this as dried wash pools look awful. Now on a side note, I was recently made aware in the comments from the previous video involving this Tauros, I believe, that I was actually pronouncing Tauros wrong. I was calling it a Tauros. I assume it's because I think of the Tau and then stick Ross on the end. I do think Tauros makes a little more sense than Tauros, so I'm going to refer to it as that from now on. It might still be wrong. It might be a Tauros. Nobody knows the correct pronunciation. Return of the buff. Oh, return of the buff. Using one of my makeup brushes repurposed for painting, we then dry brush all of the Tauros. <laughs> you said in brackets, sung like Return of the Mac. <laughs> so Return of the Buff. <laughs> Work your way up gently and don't apply too much. Much like the wheel hubs, start with a little and apply more as needed. With a dry brush layer applied, all of our armor panels have now been highlighted. It was quick and it was easy. No complaints here. Now some of you might prefer not to dry brush and you'd like to use a different technique such as the old edge highlighting. Apparently we're using an artist's palette and trowel for that. I do think the old edge highlighting looks better but dry brushing is 451 times faster. We have some Vallejo flat red up next. That's false advertising as this bottle is definitely three-dimensional. Using the flat red, we then apply a couple of thin coats to both the fuel tanks next to the footwells, the engine parts and the NOS bottle on the back of the Tauros. Not sure why I wanted a red engine, but I've seen some engines painted red somewhere and I think it looks cool. Now if you think something looks cool, then that's always a good enough reason in this hobby. Don't ever let anyone tell you any different. Some Vallejo Yellow Ochre up next. Using the Yellow Ochre, we carefully paint all those little discs we stuck on at the beginning of the video. Can you tell what they are yet? It took a couple of thin coats as per usual. Now I didn't film it, for reasons unknown, but I wanted a more intense yellow. So I added a coat of the old Imperial Fist Contrast on top of that. That made it much more vibrant. Some Vallejo Model Air gunmetal up next, but any metal colour paint will do really. We apply the gunmetal to all the metal tubing areas on the miniature. Things like the roll cage window, surround thing, the pipes holding the brush guard on, the aerial and the seat roll cage parts. We still don't know the names of those, so if any of you guys know, then please let us all know in the comments below. A little German grey now. Using the German grey, we paint all of the black areas on the miniature. Things like the seat leather and the boots of the crew. We shall be using Vallejo model colour light green now. Using a chubby brush, we then apply a couple of thin coats of light green to all the cloth areas of the crew's uniforms. This isn't the perfect green that I wanted, but it will do for now. Now I was aiming to match the artwork colours in the book for the Elysian D99. We'll go deeper into that in another video, where we paint the infantry. I'm looking forward to that one. It's stabber painting time. We are using Vallejo model colour yellow olive now. Using the olive paint, we then apply a few thin coats, as per usual, to the weapon casings. Again, we painted the whole thing silver around the same time I did the roll cages and things. I'm not sure if I mentioned it then or not. Now you can use any olive, uh, olive, olive, olivander, the winemaker, winemaker, wand maker. Now you can use any olive paint that you like. There's about a million different versions of olive green and olive drab, and they all look pretty much the same, especially when they're dry. Some Vallejo pastel green next. You might pronounce it pastel, which is right. Nobody knows. What do you mean nobody knows? Well, uh, you said- Deck officer! Deck officer! Excuse me, sir. My guy is yes, sir. Using the pastel green, we paint all the hard armored areas of the crew. I think it was just their body armor. Neither of them were wearing helmets. Very irresponsible. It's irresponsible because your head is the most important part of your body and you don't want to be hurting that. Our next colour is Vallejo US Field Drab or Vallejo US Field Drab? 
US. Okay. Our next color is Vallejo US Field Drab. It's just a light brown. Can you see the sun shining in the shit now? Marcel had to close the curtains because of that. We then paint the pilot hat things the crew are wearing with a brown. One of them is also wearing what I think is called a snood? Like a face covering made of a sheet. Now I used to wear one when I used to work in freezing conditions. They were really quite helpful, you know. If you work in a very cold place or you have to work outside in the snow, then I would recommend getting one for yourself. It's a gold paint next. We like to use Retributor Gold as it's actually gold and covers well. We painted a few choice details in the gold. The strange ribbed shaft section on their heavy stubbers and also the driver's sunglasses lenses. It looked a bit like the late 1990s Spider-Man eyes. I think it was Tobey Maguire. It's Reichland Flesh Shade up next. Using Gilliman Flesh Contrast would have been a better idea if I had it. Add that to the list too, please. We then applied a couple of thin coats of the Flesh Shade to the skin of the crew. As this was over white, we didn't have to highlight it as it almost worked like a contrast paint. But like I said, actual contrast would probably have worked better. Now I always forget I need to order these paints. And then I remember I've run out when I go to use them. I need to have some sort of list in my notes somewhere. A shopping list. How do you guys remember which paints you need to replace? Do you make a shopping list? With all the base coats and colours applied to all the parts, it was now the time for a few washers. This time we make a mix of Agrax, Earthshade and Lamian Medium in a one-to-one -one mix. Using this wash mix, we then apply it to all those coloured areas, the fuel cans, metal pipes, weapon ribs, the crew's uniforms and so on. We made sure to take our time, not rush and wick up any pooling that occurred. Now pooling and tide marks are probably the single worst thing about washers. If you know any good ways to prevent it, then please let us all know. It's time for a little weathering now. The colour we shall be using is Vallejo Hull Red, but any sort of reddy dark brown will do. Using a sponge, we then dab it all over the miniature in places we think might receive the most wear and tear, like steps and prominent edges. This is to simulate chips and scratches from use, damage exposing the paint primer underneath. Now when I say primer, I mean in-universe primer, the primer they've used on their vehicles before they paint them. Not the primer we're using for painting. I do apologise if that sounds a little confusing. Back to the buff. Using a small tipped paintbrush, we then highlight the chips we applied with a sponge. We highlight underneath all those chips, this gives us a sort of 3D effect. If you wanted to go all out, you could use black to do the same on the top edges. With the chips and highlights applied, all our chipping and scratches were finished. I think it looks really cool at this stage. Sponge chipping is a really easy method and a lot of fun. But just be careful you don't overdo it. Fan favourite Agrax Earthshade up next. Using a fine brush, we then do a little panel lining with the Agrax Earthshade. We try to be as tidy as we can with this. Not only does it help the details pop out, but it also acts as yet another stage of weathering, looking a bit like dust, oil or dirt that's accumulated in the recesses. With the Agrax Earth Shade Pin Wash and panel lining applied, our Tauros or Taurus is really starting to come together. The weathering is almost finished, but there's one more layer we'd like to add. For this layer again, we're using our red orange. Again, any orange will do. Much like before when we painted the wheels, we apply a few patches of watered down orange to the Tauros. This is to simulate rust. You can stick it any way you like, but I find recesses and worn areas seem to work the best. Now some people don't like using the old orangey brown coloured rusts on their 40k miniatures because they say the metals in 40k aren't the same metals we have nowadays and therefore wouldn't rust. But I say f*** these guys, do what the hell you like. Who knows what the metals are like? They might have super rust, it might be a beneficial rust. 
I don't know why, but it might be. We just don't know. Back to the olive-coloured paint. Wasn't Olive the name of Popeye's wife? Were they even married? We then begin work on tidying up the gun casings. Using the olive, we clean up any tide marks from the wash we applied earlier. We then mix a little buff into it. Using our olive and buff mix, we then highlight the weapon casings. We tried our best to hit edges we felt would receive the most light. Mostly, the upward facing panels and the tops of those weird half tube things on the barrels. I wonder what they're called? Now they look like some sort of flare or heat shielding on there. Again, if you know what it is, then please let us all know in the comments below. We now move on to Model Air Gun Metal. Using the gun metal, we then apply a layer of this to all the metal areas, cleaning them up. Mainly the heavy stubber barrels and the aerial. I didn't apply this to the roll cage metals, as I wanted those to have a more sort of dirty and worn look. A bit like my knickers. With that final metal layer applied, the weapons on the turret are now finished. Already. It was pretty easy, wasn't it? I do, however, have an idea on how to paint the old weapon casings easier next time. We'll try to remember to use it on the next vehicles. Okay, then we make a mix of the light green and our buff. We like using buff, don't we? Using this mix, we then highlight the uniforms of the D99 crew members. We tried our best to apply this highlighter only the most prominent and raised areas of that cloth, leaving the darker shades in the recesses. It's provided some nice contrast. Well, I think it has. Next up, the pastel green again. Much like before, we apply this pastel green to all of the armor on the crewmen. Again, we apply it to the raised areas and prominent edges. This has left us with a really strange colored armor. I'm not sure how I would describe it. Pastel green, perhaps. It says it on the bottle. Back to the flat red. Using the flat red, we carefully paint the lights on the rear of the Tauros. I assume they still have brake lights in the 41st millennium. If I was clever, I would have painted one of these two on either side as an indicator. Maybe next time. Now I once saw an actual tank on the streets driving around Norwich. I'm not sure what it was doing there. It was probably lost. I wasn't aware of any battle going on in Norwich at the time. However, I was very impressed. It actually had indicators and used them. Orange red paint now. With the orange red, we very carefully attempt to paint a little dot inside the red from the previous step on our lights. This works as both a highlight and helps to add a little depth to the bulbs. White paint next. We are going to use pro acrylic white. Some people say this is the world's best white. Do you agree? Marcel didn't do this on camera as it was as awkward as stroking a cat through a letterbox, but he has attempted to paint the front light bulbs white. On the old Tauros, these were a lot bigger and therefore easier to paint. I don't know if you can see this, but here are the old headlights. How much easier do those look to paint, eh? None of those little grills on there getting in the way of those lenses. If you fancy getting your hands on your own Tauros to paint, then check out the link up here somewhere. I'll also put one down in the description below for you. Our old mate, Imperial Fists Contrast Paint up next. Again, as it was a bit fiddly, I did it off camera, but all we did was give those white highlights a glaze with the Imperial Fists Contrast to give them a more yellow tint. I considered blue for this, and next time I might use the blue. Now what do you guys think, yellow or blue headlights? We have a decision to make. Now something else I've done off camera now, and I do apologise for this. I've painted all those little yellow discs as the Elysian D99 logos. These were quite hard to paint as it's the words Elysian and 99 on top of an inquisitorial eye on top of a white star. I did the best I could and at this size I think they came out okay. It's not going to keep me up all night. Whatever happened to Atomic Kitten, hey? I haven't seen my Atomic Kitten CDs for a long time. I probably lost them in the move. Now, if you fancy discussing Atomic Kitten or any other 90s band, then please feel free to come along and join our friendly Discord server, which is not behind a paywall. 
There's a link up here somewhere and I'll also put one down in the description below. We look forward to chatting to you there. We will now be using some flat brown by Vallejo. I know I said we were done with the weathering but I felt we just had to do this. We are stippling on the flat brown to give the impression of mud to the underside and wheel arches. It's best to do this before you put the wheels on as it will be very hard to get in there if you do. Now while we put our paints away I just want to give a big loving shout out to all of our channel members and Patreons. Dan Yallop, Lee Blackley, Donald, Pine Tree, Bobzilla, Charles Marlowe, Andrew Marrington, Dr. Lee, Nick Ellingham, Briars and Bantams and our newest member Tim Van Stralen. Thank you all so so much for all your support, we love you all. We really do. And here is everything all painted and ready for assembly. I think we managed to document most of the painting process and I don't think we missed anything out. Let me know if you're unsure of anything though. Shall we put this all together and see what we have? Now I've always found it's easier to paint bigger kits in the old sub-assemblies. But again at the end of the day you paint the way you want to. Now speaking of things you want to do, if you're enjoying this video then please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. That means you Barry. Now remember Mrs Snakeworks has said that when we hit 10,000 subscribers we're allowed to order a Warhound Titan so please hit that subscribe button and we can smash that target ASAP. If you are enjoying the content on the channel then please consider joining us on Patreon, the link to which is in the description below or up here somewhere. You might even want to become a channel member which is all the rage these days, again there's descriptions below for that. Anyway, without further ado and debegging, let's check out the finished article, shall we? And here we have it, the fully assembled and painted Elysian Detachment 99 Tauros Veneta. We are really rather happy with how this paint scheme has turned out. The camouflage is perfectly suited to the D99 and will look good in an army. I also think the weathering, chipping and dirt look pretty good too, if I do say so myself. I do have one minor gripe though. I feel our overall colour scheme is a little too dark. When we paint some more vehicles, I might try to figure out a way to get those panels a little lighter so the weathering stands out a little more and we get a greater degree of contrast. For the time taken to paint, I do think it's come out well and we cannot wait to get to work on some more D99 Elysians. But next up, I think will be some bases. I'm looking forward to figuring out the basing scheme. If you want to see more videos in this Anfelian project series, then check out the playlist up here somewhere. And as always, thank you very much for watching.